Hello, I'm Dr. Beth Godey. And I'm Dr. Martha Leatherman. I'm a geriatric specialist in psychiatry. And I'm a neuropsychologist, and I specialize in aging. We're experts in dementia care, and we're here to provide you some information and answer some questions that we hear very commonly about dementia and other issues in aging. Today, we're gonna to talk about your friend, the frontal lobe. Um, <laughs> it, yes, it lives right about there. <laughs> and we're uh, being a little bit disinhibited, uh, Dr. Godey and I, because that's one of the things that we're gonna talk about with the frontal lobe. Um, it, no, seriously, the frontal lobe and executive function is something that more and more people are starting to talk about and understand in terms of the brain and behavior. And uh, Dr. Godey, as a neuropsychologist, um, has done extensive work and evaluates people all the time with frontal lobe impairment. Tell us a little bit about the frontal lobe. Well, the reason executive functioning gets thrown out as a term with the frontal lobes is because the frontal lobes of the brain, the frontal area of the brain, is the executive center. And like an executive, what the frontal lobes do is process information, take the information in, prioritize, organize the information, delegate duties to employees, and, and uh, then take the outcome of those plans uh, in to see if, if the plan was executed and initiated and implemented properly. Um, but, but the main thing that the frontal lobes do is see down the road to see what the outcome of, of a plan or a behavior might be. And then kind of keep checking back with exactly. your progress toward that goal. Exactly. Being able to follow through and mm -hmm. finish and evaluate the outcomes. And constantly assess. Exactly right. And. Uh, the frontal lobes also allow us to assess our own behavior and appraise our own behavior. What are our limitations? What help might we need? Uh, what kinds of things can we improve on or learn from? And that, that is sort of shorthand. We, we talk about insight and judgment. Right. Exactly. Um, so when you hear somebody has impaired judgment, it's a, it's a frontal lobe issue. Or impaired awareness of mm -hmm. their deficits and their needs, those sorts of terms. So that's why a lot of times, and, and you've heard us in other, uh, other films, say, what do I do? My mom does not believe that she has memory problems, or my dad won't agree to getting any help. He says he's fine, but he's not. And we've talked to him, and we've explained it, and we've had the doctor talk to him, and he just still doesn't understand. He has no self-awareness because there's exactly a frontal right. lobe problem. That's exactly right. Now, the other thing that the frontal lobes do, and uh, this is uh, Dr. Leatherman's favorite term, is they provide the hand over the mouth. So uh, because our frontal lobes don't develop until we're in our early 20s. Fully developed. <laughs> Fully developed, <laughs> thank you. Uh, that's why children uh, will say things just off the top of their head, look at the fat lady, and you have to, to teach them not to say those kind of things, and there's greater impulsivity in mm -hmm. adolescence and childhood. There, there are, there's greater impulsivity because the frontal lobes are what manage our behavior and modulate our behavior. And keep us just from doing any old thing that comes into our mind. Or saying any old mm -hmm. thing that comes to mind. So disinhibition is the term for that, meaning that you're not able to inhibit your impulse, whether it's a behavior or a comment or an idea. We all get angry in the uh, grocery store cash, uh, cashier line when somebody's taking too long. Okay, but we don't say anything. We stand there politely and wait our turn. Or we don't shove them. That's right. Or we don't shout and yell at them. Or we don't try and attack them. That's right. However, in a lot of uh, residences and, and uh, homes for people with dementia, 
it's a, it's a big problem. If somebody is not moving quickly enough down the hall in a wheelchair, for example, somebody with dementia and frontal lobe impairment will go just shove them out of the way. Exactly. So right. that's the difference. We all have feelings and, and emotions, but normally your frontal lobe keeps you from acting inappropriately on them. And as a hand over the mouth keeps you from saying things that are inappropriate, even if you might have, have the urge or the, the sensation or the emotion. Or someone may be in a restaurant with their family eating and uh, there may be, um, there may be a, a child making some noises or maybe a baby screams or whatever. And the person will yell at the strangers, you know, shut that baby up, get that baby out of here that sort of disinhibition and and it's important to note in a loved one if this is a change in their behavior right, right. if they're not if they've been you know sweet uh, mom who would never say a bad word about anybody is suddenly cursing at people that's a change in their behavior big clue big clue big clue and uh, that can be very problematic because people will do some impulsive things and even engage in um, exploitative behaviors, uh, scams with, mm -hmm. e with elders is very uh, difficult and it's a big problem. Uh, but if you're impulsive, well, he was such a nice guy and I thought, well, $3,000 doesn't sound too much for a bad reason. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Oh, sure. And he but said I'd double my money. So. Hey, yeah. If I invested this in car batteries, this is great. This is a great scam. So you can kind of see the interplay in a situation like that but, uh, among the different functions that the frontal lobe has. So there's the insight and judgment. Hmm. Do I need to be giving a stranger a lot of money for a new car battery? And the impulsivity. Hey, sounds good. Let's just do it. Um, all going together to make a really bad situation. And there's a huge problem in this country and worldwide with, with scams and the elderly. And it's not because the elderly are not intelligent and are not wise. Right. It is because more elderly people have some level of dementia and frontal lobe impairment and so they can more easily be scanned. And that's why all of the well-meaning public service things just say no to scammers. That's right. Just hang up on them, don't talk if to them. If they're trying to scam you, you stay away from them. That doesn't help because if you don't have a frontal lobe, you don't know you're being scammed. That's right, it, sound, it all sounds very reasonable. And if you ask your loved one, you, you, would you give your social security number to a Heavens stranger on the phone? No. no. But when it happens, but he was so nice. He I'm wasn't sure. a stranger. He asked me about my kids. That's right. He grew up in this city. He wasn't a stranger. And he's called me a couple of times, and I'm sure that he must be with the bank because he knows the bank's address, and he knows where I live, and he's a friend of mine, so of course I would give him my Social Security number. So you see where the reasoning and the logic are faulty in right. that case. And... In terms of the scams, you just need to be aware that the people who prey on, on the elderly are very, very aware of where the deficits are and exactly what to do to um, get past what, what frontal lobe function there is. Um, it's very carefully calculated and plotted. Um, so th that's, that's sort of frontal lobe part one. It's a very interesting part of the brain and very complicated. And in the next uh, session that we'll be talking about, we'll continue to talk about the frontal lobes and other kinds of behavior and other kinds of problems that can arise because of frontal lobe impairment. So tune in. By the time it's over, you'll know more than most healthcare professionals. Oh yeah. For more answers to questions like these, our book, The Insider's Guide to Dementia Care, is available at Amazon.com.